Um, anyways, today I'm going to talk about virtual machines. Um, WASM short for WebAssembly. Uh, but I'm not going to just talk about WebAssembly and just give a little overview of virtual machines altogether. Uh, I think virtual machines are pretty cool. Okay. So um, for Ethereum, like, really the virtual machine is pretty core to all of it. Um, so like, what do we want from a virtual machine architect? Right, we want uh, we want really good performance, and we want it to be close to the metal. We don't want a lot of abstraction between um, what our virtual machine is doing and what the real hardware is doing. Yet we also want it to be portable. We want it to run on many devices. So we still need a layer between like x86 and native assembly, and our virtual machine. <laughs> uh, we also would like it to be uh, standardized. Right? We, don't, we don't need to recreate the wheel. Um, another really nice thing would be to have like, tool chain compatibility. It would be nice to use LLVM to like, compile stuff to run on the virtual machine. And lastly, uh, it would be good to have a, a, a clean and fairly simple instruction set, or ISA. Um, so yeah, sorry, x86. Um, so, to, to back up a little bit, uh, traditional, like normal hardware, you have uh, the execution environment. A CPU has like an execution environment, has many parts, but execution environment, and then it has a core where the ISA, the instructions, the actual uh, opcodes, get executed in. Um, and the, the, the ISA uh, is usually pretty uh, simple. I mean, it doesn't there's no instruction, for example, to uh, load something from the hard drive. Uh, the way that is handled is you have physical addresses, and they write to memory, and then uh, your CPU just reads from memory, reads and writes from memory. Um, and that's the memory sections are allocated, you know, at boot time um, for the, the physical devices. So. We, we sort of have an analogy to this in Ethereum. Um, so traditional, traditional CPUs, they keep it um, isolated. The instruction set is, is modular. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't make any assumption about the environment that it's operating in, right? Um, it doesn't make assumption about what kind of devices you have plugged into your computer, right? There's no opcodes for a mouse or whatnot. Um, so this is what this is what uh, Ethereum's current ISA looks like. Um, so this would be the intrinsic set. We have you know, uh, memory uh, operations, uh, system operations, so things that give us information about the state of the virtual machine, um, flow control, and uh, we have plenty of uh, integer operations. Um, and then going back to the analogy uh, of the traditional CPU, these opcodes uh, would be uh, like external devices. Um, so I, I want to draw like SHA-3 um, and gas, call, and pre-compiled. Now those are some interesting ones and I'll, I'll talk, to, talk to them about later. But um, so like block hash, um, and code size and all these things. These are properties of uh, an ex external environment that uh, need to go into the virtual machine, but through a modular interface, right? not necessarily having the opcode for them. Um, so the rationale of putting uh, the call lock code in with the external uh, external uh, operations that might not necessarily be um, clear that uh, our call op code is not uh, is not like a syscall like uh, if you've ever done Unix programming or something um, you have a special syscall to uh, interact with the uh, OS um, our call our call is a little bit different uh, we can think of um, ethereum so Gav has a saying what it is like Ethereum's like a singleton virtual machine, which is really nice. 
with the, I think of it sort of like a, a singleton hypervisor. And each shingle contract is its own VM or like its own VM in the sense that it has its own storage space, it has its own, um, its own isolated environment that it works in. So going back to calls, like calls aren't syscalls in traditional sense when you're talking to an operating system. Calls are more like a VM talking to another VM. Um, so yeah, that's why I think it can be external. Okay, uh, gas. So gas is a property of the uh, virtual machine. Um, and uh, if you had pure hardware, the a analog to gas would just be, you know, clock cycles. Um, so that would be nice. Um, so uh, really, I found out something really interesting, actually. Uh, not all CPUs have clock cycles. Uh, I, anyways, um, there's actually, not, it's not too relevant here, but uh, there's actually some, some CPUs that are totally asynchronous. Um, so you can't, you can't assume that all hardware has clock cycles. <laughs> And then lastly, yeah, pre-compiled contracts. Uh, they're a necessary hack that we had to do, right? Because uh, for performance. Um, but if you had a very performant virtual machine and uh, you didn't have to rewrite, you know, like SHA-3 and uh, uh, SHA-256 and EC recover, you could just compile it and run it on the virtual machine. You wouldn't need uh, the this, Pre-compiled contract. So the end result here is we have a stronger VM. We can also have a more consistent interface. So what would alternative, um, you know, possible uh, virtual machines look architecture look like? So if you want to look at hardware, uh, a really nice one today is RISC V. Um, so there's multiple RISC stands for reduced structure set. So um, there's multiple variations of RISC, uh, and RISC V is I think one of the newest ones that has a lot of momentum. Um, so yeah, it's an ISA. Uh, it has open source. Uh, open source. Um, it's open source ISA, so the specification is open, anyone can use it. it all, but the, the people developing it also include um, open source implementa hardware implementations. Um, in it. So the hardware is the rocket core that implements the ISA. So it's just like a little teeny core. And then the whole CPU, is. there's one implementation called low risk. So there's multiple implementations too, but one's called low risk uh, and that uses the rocket core. So um, yeah. So the good thing about this is like it, it's really close to the metal, right? It is metal, <laughs> um, and it's standardized. That's great. It has tool chain uh, compatibility. You can compile an EC or C++ program, and you can matter of fact just run uh, Linux on it. Uh, it has a, a fairly, very clean design, um, and but the the bad thing is, I mean, if if you wanted to actually burn one of these things to chip, it's very expensive. So you probably wouldn't. You'd probably just emulate it. Uh, development with it is uh, fairly tricky. It wasn't necessarily designed. It was designed for hardware people. It wasn't designed for software people. If you're not burning it to chip, you're emulating it. Then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to modify it some. It wasn't really designed for that in mind. Uh, environmental info information. So like loading external devices like the blockchain and stuff. Uh, there's no there's no uh, strict way or set path to do that. It, it it's assuming you're loading stuff into memory and then reading addresses from memory or reading information from memory. Uh, and that's really unnecessary because in Ethereum, we're not plugging and pulling out devices all the time. So there's really no point to have that architecture. And lastly, it's not necessarily portable um, as once again, it's yeah, designed for um, hardware. So another alternative might be uh, WebAssembly. Um, the basic idea behind WebAssembly is it's assembly for the web, uh, basically, uh, JavaScript wasn't fast enough for certain applications, 
So people uh, realized that, okay, we need a little bit lower level, um, lower, a low level abstract than something really high than JavaScript. So uh, they came up with WebAssembly. Actually, first, the uh, history was first they came up with ASMJS from uh, Mozilla. And which was a subset of JavaScript that uh, made it really easy for interpreters to uh, see sections of code and turn them into JIT, and then it was really performant, uh, but it was kind of ugly. Another alternative from Google was uh, portable Pinnacle, which allows you to run, um, compile, compile just any C++ code and uh, run it in a, uh, a safe virtual machine. Um, so that's the, sort of the predecessor to, those were the, sort of the predecessor to WebAssembly. Uh, and uh, so the current version of WebAssembly is a new ISA that is designed to be pretty ultra, really fairly low level, portable uh, and fast, and also safe for web browsers to run. Uh, it is a result of the collaboration between Google, Mozilla, Apple, and Microsoft, which of course, you know, implement all the major browsers. Um, yeah, replaces Snapple and ASMJS. Another interesting thing about it is, even though it is fairly low level, it does have some higher level um, abstracts to it. So um, the instructions are specified, uh, specify some AST abstract tree uh, semantics. So um, for example, functions, modules, um, and it has inver variables instead of registries, but it, they're really interchangeable. So um, it's, it's registry-based, if we say variables. And uh, it has, uh, it's really easy to represent in Ash expressions, which is kind of nice. So, um, yeah. Um, whew, okay, three minutes, uh, let's skip that. So you have some AST uh, semantics, which we're gonna skip. Um, the ISA, in, uh, the instruction set, so instruction set is pretty, I mean, okay, so what? Uh, People have been designing instruction sets for like a pretty long time right now, uh, and they really haven't changed for the past 50 years. So no big surprise in, in the instruction set, right? It's uh, eight bit bytes um, to use complement integer, little ending. It comes in two variants, 32 byte and 64 byte uh, bit variant. Um, so why would WebAssembly possibly good for um, using on a blockchain? Well, it's built to be performant. Um, it's very built to be JIT. Uh, it's built to be JITed. So um, at the the at, right. So like it would, came from JavaScript, which is like really hard and dynamic to JIT. And it's it's based to be like a complement to something that is really dynamic, but really not so dynamic and easy to JIT. Uh, Opcode compression is built in. Compression is like um, uh, pretty pretty important on the web when you're sending bytes across the wire, so uh, that's even more important in a blockchain. Uh, it's portable, you can, it should be easy to run on uh, many different architects. Um, it already has an LLVM backend, meaning you can compile anything you want to, uh, that uh, LLVM can compile to it and target it. Uh, the specification has a pretty clear specification and they're working on a formal specification with no camel. Um, and it's built to be run in a hostile environment. So um, what would you need to change and to modify WebAssembly to work in a, a blockchain or Ethereum-like environment? It needs to be fully dis deterministic. Uh, so WebAssembly already does a pretty good job of isolating uh, uh, non-deterministic behavior. Um, so that would be pretty easy to do. All you have to do is disable threads and a few operations uh, that uses approximations that uh, might be hardware uh, based. Um, you have to add access to environmental information, so like getting uh, the block hash and getting uh, different environmental information from the blockchain, and you'd have to add it in metering. That's a pretty big one. Um, so yeah, this is the, the environmental information you'd have to uh, add. Um, as I said earlier, WebAssembly has the idea of modules, which makes it really nice to add uh, this environmental information in, since you could implement it as a, a module, you could implement a Ethereum module, then that would have different functions to query the blockchain state. 
and uh, uh, that would that module would hook into uh, the action late of code. So there's a, a clean path of how to embed uh, this instruction set into um, uh, external environments. So also another big thing is you would need uh, backwards compatibility. And uh, it turns out transpiling EVM code to WASM is pretty straightforward. Uh, I like to do it in th two different stages. And this is not a complete project, but um, what you do is you would first translate it to WASM, and then uh, you would translate it to WASM plus metering, some metering code that would run on a, a normal WASM machine. But if you modified WASM so that you had the metering built in natively, you wouldn't do the final step. So uh, that's why it's nice to have it compiled like that. And here's some images of how transpiling looks, but my time is up. So, all right. Bye. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.